Hey there, this is Ian Perry, Project Supervisor here at Candrone. And our task is to compare the data from two DJI drones, the M30T and the M350. Now these drones were flown in the field and the data will be qualitatively and quantitatively assessed. Uh, qualitatively, we're going to look at the quality of the output in an orthomosaic map for each sensor on each drone. Quantitatively, we're going to compare these results against a survey control network that we captured with a base rover pair. So I want to start out looking at the JPEGs. Here I am looking at one of my M350 images here. And I can see that this is pretty good quality, right? We don't have a lot of graininess and we don't have a lot of or any motion blur so far as I can tell. So looking at these automobiles, they look pretty well resolved and the numbers on the pavement as well do uh, look fairly clean and clear. So now I want to jump over to one of the M30T datasets and look at the quality in those folders. And I'm going to try and grab some of the same cars or at least get one of the cars. Okay, right away I can see that this M30T produced a little bit grainier effect. The numbers on the pavement are quite hard to read and the color is a bit blown out as well. So that's a first indication that I'm not gonna get as high a result in my ortho map from the M30T as I'm going to with the uh, M350. So then the next thing I wanna do is come into QGIS, right? There's a GIS software and I have all of my control marks loaded in here, as well as some of the final ortho mosaics from the M30T and the M350. And so I'm gonna look first at M350 flight number one. And you can see this control point uh, has a mesh target over top of it. You can see the alignment is pretty good. I mean, I can actually take a ruler here in QJS and click on the center of that mark and drag toward the center of the target and you can see I've got about 3.8 centimeter distance off the mark. Okay, so I can't assess my vertical accuracy this way, but I can get a good idea of how far off I am in the X and Y. So next I want to toggle that off and look now at one of my M30T ortho mosaics and right away coming in compared to the 350 this shows that mesh target on top of the control mark much more pixelated, it's blurry, right? We have less resolution in this. And then on top of that, you can see that little mark that uh, indicates the position of that control point. It's way off the center of where that uh, mesh target is roughly situated. Let's do another uh, measurement here in the GIS. And that's actually coming in at about 25 centimeters off. So right there, a mix of qualitative and quantitative uh, evaluation. And we're seeing quite a big difference between the 30T, the M30T and the M350. So how now will I compare these two in the most quantitative sense? Well, I'm going to pull open a few of the control reports from PIX4D. And this is the software where we actually inputted the JPEG images and then added the control points, not as ground control points per se, but as checkpoints. Very important you differentiate this in any kind of photogrammetry software. If you use your ground control as GCPs in PIX4D, it will use those locations and actually render a higher quality model, which is in some cases a good idea. Uh, but in this case, we wanted to isolate the variables that we were testing, and so we added these as checks. So they are coming in and giving us a sense of, hey, how well did your model do over here against your control over here? How well aligned are they about the X, Y, and Z? So I come on in here and I look at one of my 30T 
control reports, right? You can see my nine checks have been imported and each one has an X, Y, and Z error. And you can see the number I like to look at mostly here is the very bottom, the root mean square error. And you can see here that with respect to X, Y, and Z, we are looking at about 11 centimeters, almost 22 centimeters, and about 15 centimeters, respectively. That's not too good, and that is reflecting what we saw over in QGIS, where we did a more visual analysis of how far off the point was from the mesh target. Now next I want to jump into one of the 350 control reports, because we actually looked at that in QGIS and saw that the alignment was very good. In the X, Y, and Z, we're looking at about 3.6, 1.9, and 3.1 centimeter error, respectively. You're talking like 10 times more error with the M30T compared with the M350. So at this point in time, it's really important to ask the question, okay, well, did you have RTK fix with both sets of flights? And the answer is yes, we flew with an RTK fix. That means that real-time satellite information is reaching the drone in each case and providing uh, globally accurate data for each image. Then the, the next logical set of questions, well, what were your uh, flying speeds, flight heights, and what are some of your camera settings? We played around with two different kinds of ISO and shutter speed. There's a big difference between the M30T and the M350 in that the M30T has that uh, electronic shutter. Things in the frame uh, are exposed at slightly different times, whereas that uh, global and mechanical shutter of the P1 camera on the M350 is uh, open to everything in the frame in one instant. So that's just a bit of background. When we talk about shutter speed between these two sensors, there is a bit of difference in how the shutters perform. We looked at one one hundredths of a second and one eight hundredths of a second for shutter speed. And we looked at ISO of about 3200 versus three to eight hundreds. So I want to talk about the best results we got and work backwards from there. So it turned out with all of our settings compared, the M350 flown at 1 800ths of a second shutter speed with a higher ISO, but slow airspeed at six meters per second. That got us the absolute lowest error. And it's quite evident when we look physically at the ortho in the QGIS and actually overlaid with that control point, the control point is right bang in the middle of that mesh target. We have about 3.3 uh, centimeters of error, 2.3 centimeters of error and 2.8 about the X, Y and Z respectively. And just for a bit of context, if you look at the P1 camera, the spec sheet for that camera rates absolute accuracy at three centimeters horizontally, about five centimeters vertically. So we actually beat the spec sheet in vertical absolute accuracy for the P1. Now comparing that to the 30T with those same uh, flight parameters and camera parameters, we can see that the error is, you know, considerably worse uh, with that 30T coming in at 19 centimeters, 72 centimeters, and 1.6 meter error uh, in the X, Y, and Z respectively. And I just want to point out that in the spec sheet on DJI's website for that M30T, there is no accuracy rating. This is a camera that can be used for photogrammetry despite these results. But I wanna be clear what kinds of photogrammetry you might wanna use this sensor for and what kinds of photogrammetry you'd like to avoid. You don't want to use the M30T wide angle camera to capture photogrammetry data where accuracy really matters, where you're making volumetric measurements, doing some 
measurements in space, layering one uh, flight over another to look for uh, change detection. These are not use cases that I would recommend with the M30T. This drone is really intended for first response. Uh, with that thermal lens, it really delivers in night flying in particular and inspection work with the zoom camera, right? Uh, the P1 on the M350, on the other hand, has proven here that we can get to under five centimeter accuracy. And therefore, I would definitely recommend using the P1 camera for photogrammetry applications where construction is the end goal, where you want to do volumetrics at stockpile sites and so on. So in this video, we compared some results of photogrammetry with the Matrice 30T and the Matrice 350 with the P1 camera. We concluded that for construction applications, the P1 camera is the superior choice. If you like this video, subscribe to our social media channels. And if you have any questions about these or other products, visit candrone.com.